Hey Tatsters, welcome back to the channel. Bit of a different video today. Been promising it for a few weeks now because I've been in the, obviously the new unit, what, just over a month now? Kept promising a tour, kept promising. Time to show you around the old gaff. Time's just gone 11 o'clock in the morning. And I'm here to about four, so almost a full day shift, not quite. But yeah, I thought I'd take this opportunity to film my sort of day here. First of all, got my bits and bobs together. Obviously GoPro camera. Here's my daily rucksack. Nice hard case. In here, I'll just keep like laptop, my iPad. Uh, yeah, just things like that that can go to and from the house. Then if I've got like RA stuff or orders or cardboard from family, that obviously comes with me. So first job of the morning is to obviously get ready for the day ahead. So yeah, just unload the old rucksack. Bluetooth speaker. Can't be here for any amount of time without a good old Bluetooth speaker. Back out some tunes, put some podcasts on. iPad and laptop. So while that's firing up, I might as well show you my desk. This was actually for sale at one point when I had my garage. Nice mid-century teak desk. But it's now mine, which is handy. Obviously, there's my printer. Oh, got to put these on. Back them things on. Get the old storage slippers on. Nice. Alright, well, that's loading up. As I was saying, yeah, this is my mid-century desk. Got my trusty Zebra label printer there. Trusty work tool move them and here's my man drawer full of supplies got this for Christmas from Amy to prepare me for my full-time work here just bits and bobs first aid kit this is quite funny got some calming a roller calmer you know when I get stressed hand gel tablets what I'm lucky was he baby wipes that's mainly for when I'm picturing got a notebook and moisturizer yeah, just bits and bobs. Oh, and some treats. And then we just got like receipts and yeah, just boring tax stuff and the others. So no point showing that. Uh, and then on the desk, obviously got my clock. And uh, this is my testing TV with all the wires I need. As you know, I like my electronics. Um, still got some more to test here. Just got a spare TV so I can put it on my bench. And yeah, just test VHSs, DVD players, gaming consoles. Yeah, just a cheapie. It was the girl's old one, so it hasn't cost me anything. Yeah, it's just handy to have. So I'm moving along to this corner here. This is my FBA type shelf. That's what I've designated it to at the moment, mainly. There's some smalls that are for sale on eBay. But yeah, this is my FBA type shelf. It's starting to get full, so I might do some FBA next week. So keep an eye on the channel. I'll try to put a video out. There's just RA stuff, new and sealed, and then vintage games. They'll be all boxed up, all together, sent to Amazon, and then Amazon then store them, and when they sell, Amazon send them out uh, under their Prime delivery, next day delivery, which is why I can ask a premium price. And it gets the stuff out the unit, obviously. Shutters come in, shut them, bit of privacy. This is my good sin type thing. Everything here, apart from, ignore that, let's go in. Basically everything from the boot sales, charity shops, whatever I've picked up to buy, to resell goes here the first entry point so obviously electricals we need testing and cleaning but these are waiting on spare parts like bulbs i just want to fully test that i put that up the other day yes yeah, mainly electronics but yeah basically boot sale i'll come here to unload and i'll just whack it all here and if it starts to spill then i gotta get on top of it maybe calm down the source in a bit I like to keep on top of things otherwise it gets stressy I've been doing that since I started, even in a smaller unit, and it's always worked out nicely. So I'll continue that. Before we go around to the storage area, I might as well show you the packing bench. So I invested in this packing bench, ready for the bigger unit on purpose. And yeah, it's been working out really well. They keep all my supplies here. I did have my garage until last week, and that's why there's lots of cardboard up here. I don't really want that much cardboard. It's filled up up there, and it's filled up down here. But yeah, that was my spare cardboard anyway. Here we go, polystyrene, all secondhand cardboard, like secondhand filler, got secondhand mailing bags, obviously reusing everything if I can. 
nice meter and a half size bench seems to do the trick and just the usual supplies that you know i use three inch wide tape that's a new gun actually i did use a duck one I was using this one till recently but they don't actually sell this anymore and also this is a lot better it's like sharper and also the reload it takes literally five seconds you pull this back take the old one out put a new one in fold that back and yeah it's also got an extra roller to make it easier this one is really good dummy well i've had it a couple of years maybe but um it's a lot harder like you've got to literally squeeze the tape on squeeze it off and it gets caught there's only one roller so yeah like here we go it gets stuck here quite a lot and under here so done me well, but it's not a link to that anymore, so, but I don't think they sell that anymore. So yeah, I highly recommend one of these. Uh, the wider tape, obviously, and yeah, this ProSun. It's available in orange and blue. Obviously, link's down below if you did want to try it out. Recommend it. Double tape dispenser. My roller. Also, I really like this addition. Just a simple bar, so I can roll out bubble wrap and paper as and when. Here's all my poly bags, all different sizes and shapes for different things. You've seen me pack in the past, so you know what they are. Just spare bits and bobs. Uh, yeah, that's basically that. That's my Nintendo 64, my original one from like Christmas 98. I just use that to test out old CRT TVs. And if I get a bit bored, might have a little play anyway. And then just spare tape and supplies. Enjoying this so far? <laughs> Hopefully it's interesting. Because now we're coming on to the picturing section. Again, as you may know, from when I started full time, so what's that, July 2016, almost four years, I've been using the faux grass and wallpapered wood effects. But um, obviously it was original back then. Obviously since the channel's gone really well and everything, I've noticed on eBay, obviously people replicating that. That's fine, but um, I want my store to stand out and be original, which is why I've invested in a brand new, well, I say brand new, it's actually vintage from the original from the 80s. Just this nice like fabric really. Like nice squares, like random prints every now and then of colour. It's not layery enough to distract from the item. And yeah, it's keeping up with the retro thing. When I was first started, it was all mid-century furniture, lamps and things. Still do that, but obviously not the furniture. So I'm more towards moving on the decade now instead of 60s 70s it's moving on to 80s and stuff like the hi-fi like 90s games toys so i thought yeah the wooden grass effect was he putting electronics outside didn't really make sense anymore which is why i'm using this it's been working well i've been getting lots of sales lots of comments as well people liking it and people not liking it a bit of marmite but i like that and of course i like it that's all that matters really <laughs> So it's not just this background, I actually have got a couple, but I still keep the faux grass and I put that like from the back and coming around and I use that for shoes, so like for trainers. I could use it there if they're cool retro ones, but for like walking boots and stuff, I have the grass coming down and that'll be a grass background still. But for mainly everything else, it'll be this. Um, for clothing on a mannequin, I might get something else because that doesn't quite match like a football top with this retro background doesn't quite match up so yeah i might have three different backgrounds which i don't mind again my lights i love these things love them i did have the big umbrellas that most people use and they're just a pain in the bum they're big bulky take up a lot of room good quality light but yeah i'm all about things not getting in my way basically these are by newer led video lights uh, you need two of them obviously i used two one each you could use a third i could do with a third really coming from uh downwards so the these lights will stop the shadow but to get the maximum effect i could do with another one above really but twos does the job nicely for me anyway again links down below if you are interested i know quite a few of you have actually bought these and i've had nothing but great reviews so yeah highly recommend them you can buy them with battery packs like i have so you don't have to plug them in all the time that is an additional extra you don't have to they are just plugged in at the mains as well and they last as long as you need them really this is all ready to picture so i'll be doing picturing after orders i think mannequin again link down below nothing special just a bloke on a stick and a female on a stick that's for the wife and then basically from here on out is just storage all the way along it's sort of 
organized chaos. <laughs> I know where everything is and it is in sections like, you know, all trainers together, all sports and boots together, smart boots and shoes in here, biker stuff, books, toys. Yeah, it's all together. I know where it is. If I, if it got any bigger, I'd probably have to start numbering and labeling boxes. But for now, yeah, I know where everything is. In the corner, there's the rest of the electronics all that I never got around to showing. So that's tucked there for now. And yeah, nice lot of electrics all tested and I think not all listed yet, but all pictured and ready to be uh, listed, which is good. I've seen people comment in the comment section, obviously, that saying that my storage unit is full already. It's nowhere near full. Trust me, I've got loads of space. I see this shouldn't be up here. Once I get through some cardboard, that'll be two more big boxes there. This should be gone soon. So that's another box. That's got plenty of room in. That's got plenty of room in. Yeah, plenty of room there. Can go all the way up to the ceiling. Nice high ceiling, sort of 10, 11 foot tall ceilings. This is a completely empty box. So no stock in there at the moment. Uh, that's almost full, but plenty more space again. These are full, but I won't be buying clothing as much now. We're almost in boots out season. And these are hardly used at all. This bit's just a bit awkward because I've got all this big stuff to get through. Once that's sold and out of the way, I can then tuck that in and there'll be more space here. So yeah, plenty of room, loads to play with. Still not 100% there, sort of 90% there. But like with them big, huge electronic things I got from that haul. I want to get them shifted as soon as possible so I can make more room for more stock, which is the idea. And also buying quicker stock. I don't want stuff to sit as long like the furniture did. I bought furniture, it would sit around, sit around and then sell. I can't be doing that anymore. I want to buy stuff. I want it gone in sort of three months tops, hopefully. That's the plan. Obviously it won't work out every time. But yeah, just keep the cool retro high selling stuff in, get it out again, repeat. That's the plan and that's the mini tour of the unit i think you've seen everything again any questions let me know in the comments and i'll try and cover them in a future video so i've unpacked i've showed you around first order of the day is picking orders only two going out i packed yesterday so this is literally from this morning two going out a nice small one this is actually a personal item again which should be over here in a small electronic doing this one-handed I think both items are in the same one actually. No, of course not. Okay, I'm not in that one. They must be up here. I think they're both up here as well. This is my personal item. Only 5 99 plus postage, but I'd, yeah, it was better than just whacking it in a boot sale pile and getting 50p or a pound at the boot sale when we're selling. Uh, I bought this from you. I think it cost me a tenner. So, it's only gone a few pounds cheaper than what I bought it for. But I used this in my garage. Just a little deterrent, it's really blooming loud. It's just a, like a code put in, sensor goes off. Yeah, nothing to buy and resell, but that was my personal item, which is quite cool. And then one order that was to resell, I made money on, which came in only about half hour ago. This Olympus AF1 35 millimeter camera. Uh, 6.99 from a charity shop. I think this was from Braintree. We went on a Sunday with the family and uh, just had a quick browse and found a nice bolo made in Japan and sold for £37.1p and p plus £2.99 postage, a £40 all win. Really nice camera to look out for. I've sold two of these recently and they've both gone for strong money and you can get them cheap because it doesn't look anything special really. But obviously if you know what you're looking for, you know you're going to get good money. So that's the two orders, time to pack them. So as I showed you, I need to get through some of this cardboard. So like with this, normally I'd probably wrap it in a load of that and then put it in one of my bags. That would be good enough. But I'm gonna get through some of this cardboard. So I'm gonna wrap it in some of this cardboard and then it should be okay to tape up and then off it goes. Or if not, then I will put it in a bag after it's in there. And then with the camera, I wanna take obviously more care of this. That's a good, decent camera. I want the customer to be happy. So I've got a nice small box here. Again, second hand, owes me nothing. If you get a supplier for free cardboard, like big supermarkets, like bigger shops, they're always getting cardboard in, in and out, obviously. So yeah, make contacts so you can get nice free cardboard. Make up the box, bit of brown tape, tape it up and it's good to go. Nice and easy.
That's the two parcels done. So that's another job done for the day. Come down there for a bit. While we're doing a bit more of a behind the scenes video, might as well show you my little routine. Every day I log in. So you've done my parcels. I then like to check my eBay account, make sure it's all in good standing order. Make sure that there's no feedback to catch up on, like negatives or neutral. Yeah, just make sure that's all good. And then probably most importantly, checking my seller level. Obviously, late deliveries, I've got 0 0.32, which is obviously absolutely fine. And everything else is on zero, top rated seller. And then returns rate, just make sure that's not too bad. Next up, I like to just log on to my Amazon seller account. Just again, check up on any feedback in case there is any that needs following up. No, all good still. You, I rarely ever get feedback on Amazon. Like the last, I haven't received any feedback in the past 90 days. And in the past year, I've only received, there we go, only six feedbacks from a year selling on Amazon. But yeah, anyway, none to catch up on there. Check the old Amazon Associates affiliate links, see how that's getting on, making sure they all work. I think a few of them I need to catch up on that. So that's another job for me a bit later. And lastly, and obviously a newer one within the past year, check the YouTube channel, make sure that's all in good order. Obviously it shows, this is like behind the scenes again in the creator studio, let's give it a refresh. So what am I currently standing on? 6112 subs, which is awesome. Yet again, always mental. 400 in the past month I had a little well a big boost there so that's cool then you get like stats like views watch time revenue that sort of thing top videos bit of learning YouTube do their own videos on how to improve and bits and bobs current video released this one last night uh, charity shop championship champs for round two and it says a little performance and apparently it's Performing the best out of all my recent videos. I don't know how far it goes But compared to all my recent videos in the first 15 hours and 30 minutes it is top performing the best which is awesome That's really good actually and then down below there's like the community page So I put posts like it was Layla's birthday. You can see the likes and comments recent subscribers well, Let's give some recent subscribers a little shout out shall we? The most popular uh, subbed person to me, 9.4 subscribers, a little obsessed UK. Welcome, if you are watching this. And the Stevenson Greech family, Hollister TV, the Mad Tata, I recognise that name. Yeah, these are all recent subscribers, so I don't know, oh, the last 28 days, there we go. So in the last month, there's a list of people that make theirs public, have subscribed to the channel, so welcome, if you see your name. Give us a little shout out in the comments. Part of the retro reselling family. Thanks. So there we go. Um, orders done now. Uh, checked up on all my stats and all my feedbacks and just make sure there's nothing to catch up on. Everything's good, which is what how I like it. And yeah, I think before I carry on, it's 12 o'clock now. I'm gonna have a bit of lunch. I won't film that. <laughs> And then after a bit of lunch, I'll probably be doing some photographs or some testing. Probably do some photographs first because there's plenty of stuff to get on with. So yeah, see you in a second. Finished my lunch, having a nice hot cup of tea next to my flask. I uh, thought I'd touch on actually working in a storage unit. When I first transferred over from my small one to my bigger one now, people were questioning if I'm actually allowed to do it and the insurance involved. So uh, yeah, I've touched on it before, but I thought I'd go over it again because I've seen a couple of other people mention it and I've heard people mention it in other chats and stuff. So basically, yes, it is allowed <laughs> in the UK. You can work from a storage unit. I actually encourage it. I think companies like Big Yellow, South Storage, Safe Store, their main customer focus is businesses. Like this me, again, my next door neighbor, they're a full on, business as well I can hear them working away in the afternoons doing orders and everything so yeah there's no law against working in a unit I don't know what that law would be to stop it but yeah it's not again I can have a phone line in installed as well so I can get like broadband or my own phone line business phone line I've got internet I've got lighting yeah so it is allowed it is legal another thing questioned was business rates so how it works is the storage company it's their unit their land so they are responsible for business rates and no doubt within my monthly rent 
business rates is obviously going to be covered. So in a way, I am paying business rates, but it's all within my rent. And then following on from that, insurance. I get people quite often saying, what insurances do they need for their reselling business? What do I have? As for cover for myself, again, it's all in my monthly rent. I'm covered for everything in this unit right now. So if there's a theft, fire, flood, <laughs> or whatever else, my insurance covers what's in here. And that's basically everything. As for liability insurance, selling electricals, that's another one I get asked a lot. You don't necessarily need that. No, I don't have it, never had it. I'd looked it up, but yeah, as long as you do a physical pat test, which obviously you look at the item, is there wires exposed, is it safe? Is it sparking, smoking? That's all, as far as I know, that's all you need to do, physical pat test. Again, you can buy a pat testing machine to plug in to test the case and everything. Yeah, that's it really. Everything's in my monthly rent and everything's covered. So in the photo area now, just finishing getting set up. Obviously I've got my box of things ready to be pictured. I have a box here full of bits and bobs that help with the photography efficiency. You see trusty baby wipes, plastic free ones, a bit of elbow grease. Now this is good for shoes. As soon as you get white shoes with like a white trim around the bottom, obviously this is in contact with the ground. They're going to get like brown and muddy and everything. A bit of elbow grease, just spray it a bit on, wipe it off with a baby wipe or something. And it comes up, not like new, but crispy finish, really good. And it does last a while because it's obviously in a plastic bottle, which isn't ideal, but still. Shoe trees help keep the shape of the shoes, use them all the time. Again, recommend getting them if you're selling shoes. Tape measure, always measure your clothes when you can, even if it's just a pit to pit. That's the one I get asked the most. Measuring tape, some cable ties. I've got these free when I open a Royal Mail account. Not that I've ever used it, but it's handy. For example, for example, once it's ready to picture that electronic with a plug, I just cable tie it together. Just helps keep the wires together. Otherwise they dangle down like this, like here. I haven't done this one for whatever reason. It's starting to dangle down. It'll start getting like, all mixed up so I'm not sure why I haven't done that one plus what I like to do with them with the cable ties I forgot what this is called but I call it a defluffer <laughs> obviously older jumpers and clothes they can get sort of bobbly like I'm wearing a knitted jumper today just turn it on it helps shave and get the clothing tidier basically or show everything because it's a bit boring <laughs> yeah just a couple of shoe polishes a whitener more baby wipes uh, that's the head to the you. There you go. Yeah, in addition, black shoe polish and some scissors. Helps with time efficiency. So picturing this and then I suddenly need to find this and that. I can just grab my little box, do what I need to do, picture, put it away. So I've got my first item. Obviously, this is a nice retro caterpillar. I've got what he's called, but he's from the 80s. Good little bolo actually. Should be asking 20, 25 pounds for him, I believe. Uh, bought for one pound fifty. So he'll go nicely against my new 80s type background. So I'm gonna set up my lights now. Turn that on. So yeah, I'll show you the lights again. There's a switch, one is for the battery power, which I'll be using, and the other is for the mains. Let's just make sure you got the right one on. Yeah, much better. Looks a bit yellow, but the good thing with these lights is you can change the yellowness and the whiteness. Of the lights obviously you can turn them right down until they go off there you go come this way so we've got the white light and the yellow obviously we can then mix them together so i like to put on full white and add a bit of yellow that tends to make a nice natural type color then coming this side just do it again adjust it and there we go nice and bright if i step back so see with this this one bulb it does dull out quite quick, but there you go. Both sides. And then if I could get a third one coming down just to make it even better. Yeah, that does the job nicely. Ready to go. All I use to picture is my trusty iPad Pro. Uh, I've had this a couple of years now and it is a strong beast. It does all the jobs, does my photography, does my video editing, uploads my videos from YouTube on here. I list on eBay, I photo edit, ready for eBay, does everything. So. Again, well worth buying. I've got a basic laptop. It's nothing special, but that's just for my postage and labels mainly. If I go live from home or from the unit, I use the laptop. But yeah, apart from that, everything on the iPad. 
Right, I think that's about it for now. So, do another little time lapse thing, do some photoing, and round this video up pretty much. Because apart from that, I haven't got much else to do today, which is quite cool. So, yeah, let's get a picture in. <laughs> And there we have it. That's my unit. That's sort of an average-ish day. What I'm going to be up to in my unit when I'm here all day, every day. Obviously, I'll be doing a lot more sourcing and that once I've caught up on everything. But with food sales, I'm going to be getting lots. So hopefully, filling that every weekend. There's a midweek one I can now go to because I don't have to worry about dropping the kids off at school. So once I'm battling through everything, I'm caught up to date. I'll be going out to charity shops. Hopefully, get, making more contacts. That's the plan as well this year. Contacts are so important when you're doing this full time. That's that way you've got constant stock coming in. You might have to pay up a bit, but again, paying up isn't the end of the world if you're getting good quality stuff and lots of it. Thanks everyone for watching this video. Hit the like button if you did enjoy it. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Yeah, it'd be good to have you along. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye. <laughs>